Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Club 86. I uh, hope you're keeping well uh, and staying at home at the moment and enjoying your weekend. Um, at the moment we'll probably be looking to the horizon for all the car shows that are coming up and gearing up for those. Um, looking forward to being out in the sun, looking at some beautiful cars, bikes, anything with an engine really, uh, or a Land Rover of course. Uh, obviously that's not happening at the moment, uh, it's a lot of them being cancelled due to COVID-19, uh, quite rightly so to keep us all safe. Some have been postponed for later in the year, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, but there's something happening right now today, which we can all really look forward to and get involved in more importantly, and that is Classics for Carers. Uh, that is basically a gigantic online car show that has been created, uh, not only so that we can contribute to that and share all of our pride and joys online, but so we can raise money for charity and for the NHS, more importantly, uh, to help those key workers on the front line in the fight against COVID-19. So how can you get involved and help that? So basically, if you've got a, your pride and joy at home, if it's in your garage uh, or if it's on your driveway already, uh, take a nice picture of it. I meant lots of pictures, in fact. We'd like to see as much as possible. Uh, put them on the Classes for Carers Facebook page or post it on Instagram with the hashtag classics for carers uh, don't forget that it's really important uh, and just basically share what you have share your car share your your passion and joy for classics and cars in general uh, and hopefully all together we can enjoy that today um, also in the form of videos like this one uh, I'm doing one on my Defender which is basically just a walkthrough of my car also if you're new to Club 86 haven't seen it before uh, my friend Fred which I also do the channel with he's got a Land Rover 90 uh, which he's going to be doing a video on as well basically a very detailed walk around of that car uh, and also some of the things we've done with it in the past which will be dropping a lot of clips in this video and his video uh, which has got some quite amusing stuff in it uh, we've hill climbed his Land Rover 90 which was an experience uh, and also we made a sort of viral video called Farm Karna uh, which is basically our answer to Ken Block's Jim Karna films um, but in Land Rover form. Uh, it's probably 10 minutes you'll never get back, but uh, it's a good laugh. So yeah, maybe go check it out if you want to. But um, more importantly, uh, if you go to Classics for Carers, they have a Just Giving page, uh, and that's a way that you can contribute and raise money for the NHS. Um, so please, if you can, go to that page, um, donate a little, maybe what you would have paid for lunch at a car show or an entry ticket or something like that. You could contribute that today um, and get that to get that money going because uh, they basically hit their target surpassed it and going way way over which is fantastic so uh, yeah please keep giving and supporting if you can another way uh, of uh, supporting classics for carers is by buying one of their stickers or in fact two of their stickers uh, to put in your window of your car and to proudly present fly the flag for them uh, and also you can get a really nice looking rally plate to go on the front of your car or on the back uh, which looks brilliant so yeah please if you can uh, buy one of those, maybe a sticker, maybe donate through the Just Giving page and also show your car off and, and support this fantastic cause and event. Um, but without further ado now, we'll get into it. I'll show you around my Land Rover and, uh, and we'll have a bit of fun. So let's go. Okay, so this is my Land Rover Defender. Uh, it's a 1993 200 TDI. I probably had it for about ooh, six or seven years now. Uh, maybe eight years actually and I love it it's my it's been my first car it's been my daily driver uh, on and off and uh, yeah I, I wouldn't change it for the world uh, obviously it has changed a fair bit since I got it uh, there might be some pictures coming up on the screen now of what it looked like when I got it, it looked a bit more innocent a bit more like a classic uh, but since I had it I wanted to make it look a bit beefier so that's where the uh, the modulars came in uh, along with the general grabbers which are actually really great they've seriously I've probably had them for about five or six years now on this car and they have still got a fair amount of tread on them so I think starting off I'll probably go right to left on the front here uh, I removed the uh, original lights around just because I wanted a bit more of a, a retro look um, probably about a year ago now when I did that and then went for these series bezels which I think work quite nicely uh, I just kind of like the retro look of them these actually came from a website called Paintman Panels. I'll probably put the link in the description below for you to, uh, to follow. But these are a reproduction. Uh, and originals I found were very expensive, even secondhand. Um, 
I know they're probably sought after for originality and everything, but I think these look great. They do the same job and uh, they're very hard wearing as well. So, uh, and, and well, fraction of the price. So I don't see why you wouldn't go for them really. We've got the LED headlight, which is from the original Cafe Racer. Uh, these made a huge difference on the road. Uh, I mean, it's night and day, literally. Uh, there's a video that Fred and I did, which you can see where we did a comparison between uh, his original lights on his Land Rover uh, and, and these ones, uh, and it's quite a difference. There's nothing wrong with the original lights, but I found that when I was going down the road and I had a much more modern car with modern lights coming towards me, it would pretty much blank my lights out and I wouldn't be able to see anything. Uh, and that happened a few times, and a few close calls, so since I had these, it's been absolutely <laughs> brilliant. I could actually see. Moving on from the headlight, also got the Y-Pack LED side lights and indicators, uh, and also the brake lights on the back. Uh, again, this was just an upgrade due to the fact the old ones were very faded. Um, and I know, I, I think they look really nice on the vehicle because they have that original look. You can tell they're LED obviously, but um, they're still in keeping with the car and they're very bright and they do a really nice job. So I highly recommend these. There is about 110 pounds for a set. So yeah, you can't go wrong with these again. Uh, the grill. I'm pretty sure you can get this grill from Bear Mac. I think it's an aftermarket one. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I got mine off eBay personally. But uh, you can also find this one on Bear Mac. I've seen it on their website. Um, I think the original one comes with a piece that comes up over here, over the Defender badge. And I didn't really fancy that because I wanted that to be shown. So I just cut that piece off um, and then sprayed it black, primed it and sprayed it black. and. Again, it's got a bit of a different look to it. Um, I really did want a uh, wolf grill, um, but they're also quite expensive. So this was <laughs> this was the next best thing. Uh, you know, a little bit rickety. It vibrates a little bit, but you know, it does the job. I think it looks quite nice, and the front end looks quite fresh now. Bit of a uh, warble in there in the front bumper. Uh, from memory, I think it, that was on holiday, um, possibly in Suffolk. Was reversing out of a driveway the place we were staying at accidentally hit the bumper on the on the front porch of the house subsequently ripped the corner of the front porch off uh, which was rotten wood underneath so part of the reason it came off but also <laughs> my uh, bad reversing skills dented the bumper and destroyed the porch in the process so yeah <laughs> another great story yeah so that pretty much does it for the front end uh, i'll try and show you over the under the hood now so i can get my hand underneath it Okay. Just a quick little story uh, as we were talking about headlights there. Um, once uh, I was with Fred and John and I was in this and Fred was behind me with John um, in the Land Rovers uh, heading to Peterborough Land Rover show and it was getting dark and we were on a dual carriageway and suddenly all of Fred's lights went out. His headlights went out, side lights, everything. Um, <laughs> he gave me the call and I looked behind me and I said, yeah, I can see you. You haven't got anything. So he basically just drove straight up behind me as close as he could. And I was his lights. And um, we had lorries going past us. We were in the slow lane. Uh, and it was a bit touch and go for 40 minutes whilst we were sort of still finding our way to Peterborough. It, was, it wasn't very amusing at the time, but to look back on it, it was quite funny. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just funny things like that that happen in Land Rover. So you look back on it and go, oh, that was a, a funny story that we made it out the other side of luckily. So yeah, funny things like that that make these cars fun and also a bit annoying anyway the engine uh, so this is just a standard 200 tdi two and a half liter um it is absolutely workhorse i haven't really pushed it a lot over the years to be honest it's just gone and gone and gone never really had any major issues with it luckily uh touch wood on mine it's got a just a standard turbo Obviously on Fred's, he's uprated his quite a lot and I think pretty pretty much pushed it as far as you can go with the 200 TDI and got really good results as well. It has had uh, the fuel tweaked a little bit on it, um, but nowhere near as much as Fred's. Uh, it was just really to give it a bit of a flurry to improve things a little bit on the road. Um, also increased the smoke, but there we go. That's a bit of a, <laughs> a byproduct of that, but it's not too bad. So the uh, Land Rovers recently had a new starter motor. It was around Christmas actually, uh, and a new wiring loom front to back. 
um, basically because I kept blowing fuses. Uh, just ridiculous <laughs> how many times I've blown fuses uh, and couldn't find the problem. Traced the wires, took the dashboard out, couldn't see anything obvious. Uh, traced it back as well as far as you could through the chassis to the back, nothing obvious at all. So just decided to cut losses, replace the whole thing, and that's fixed the problem. It's fine and it's nice to know that it's got a new wiring loom in there which is probably going to last a long time as well. Uh, then did the starter motor because naturally after doing the loom it didn't want to start because it had been sat for ages. Did lots of uh, <laughs> trial and error with that, just replaced the starter motor, new starter motor now which is great. Uh, and then after that uh, also replaced the battery. So. It's good to go now for a good while. Occasionally, you know, you have to spend a bit of money on these things and you kind of put jobs off, put things off, and then suddenly it starts to fault. So you just have to take the plunge and spend the money, but you know, it's how these things go and it's the only way you can look after these if you maintain them. Yeah, so that pretty much wraps up everything under the hood. It's all very standard. So not very exciting, unfortunately, compared to Fred's, but uh, nevertheless, a good workhorse. So I'll pop this bonnet down and we'll have a look around the rest of the car. Oh yes, that was a, a recent one near Christmas time. I was working on the car, had the bonnet all the way up, and the bonnet strut wasn't attached to the bonnet, and it was sticking up like that, and I forgot about it, slammed the bonnet, and that was the outcome. Another war wound. So obviously, uh, obviously on this car, it's the paint's actually quite nice, to be honest. I'm quite lucky with the paint job, but it's got, you know, dings in it that were in it before, and a few dings that, admittedly, I've added over the years, but... Uh, that's what you get with the Land Rover, no panel is straight, just like that. Stood on quite a lot over the years. I used to have a roof rack on here and I used to just stand on the wings. Uh, but that's what it's for, again, working vehicle. And I quite like all its little blemishes because it adds to its story and part of its history. I have to open it from the inside now. I'm not sure if that popped off or somebody popped it off, but it seems to have gone missing recently, which is a bit worrying. So, I look inside. Uh, again, pretty much kept it uh, all original inside the car, just because I like the look of it, didn't want to change it. I know you can buy quite extravagant dash panels and things like that, but uh, the original look works just fine for me. I just, all I've done is upgraded it a little bit over the years, uh, such as this panel here, the binnacle. Took the old plastic one out and replaced it with this one. It's a really nice, solid construction. Uh, and it holds the gauges really nicely actually and again has a bit of a retro look. <laughs> I like the retro look um, uh, Yeah, it's a brilliant fit really sturdy um, Obviously it moves about a little bit wouldn't be a Land Rover if it didn't But I think it's uh, very in keeping with the rest of the dash in here. I have got that boost gauge um, I don't think it's actually hooked up at the moment, but if it is it's not making much boost That's for sure not as much as Fred's is um, and just the temperature gauge and fuel gauge, all fairly standard. And of course, made in 1993 sticker, had to have that. Uh, replaced the original steering wheel with a classic Momo. Got this one off eBay uh, from a chap in America, actually. And I'm not sure what car it came out of, but uh, no doubt it was certainly a lot quicker than this Land Rover. Um, it's actually uh, a Nicky Lauder edition, which it wasn't sold for very much. Um, but I think it's actually quite a rare wheel well, after I looked it up. So that was a quite a nice find. And it's I think it's about 360 or 350 mil. Um, yeah, very nice to drive with. Feels really comfortable. It's not too small. Maybe could be a bit bigger. But uh, yeah, again, just wants a bit of a classic look. Um, and also, it's just really comfy. Also got this cubby box. Uh, well, when did I buy this? At least uh, five years ago. Uh, bartering with a guy at the Stonely Land Rover show. I think it was about 30 quid in the end. Assortment of things in, in there. Uh, it never had a center seat either. It was just a blank space, basically. Uh, standard cup holders with junk in, as you'd expect. Uh, something that was replaced recently in the hazard switch, which probably contributed to my fuse blowing at some point. Come around the other side to give you a bit of a better view inside. Yeah, a number of stickers along here. Uh, Magnus Walker, that's Club 86 special. Don't know what's going on with that really. <laughs> Only good one. K&M filter, 
This car's not actually fitted with a K&N filter, but you know, I think I did buy one, but didn't end up fitted it and Fred used it for a while. These seat covers um, are really great. They're from uh, LI Upholstery. Really, really good company. Um, they were at a few Land Rover shows we went to in the past. I'm not sure if they're still going. I hope they are. Uh, they make great product. Uh, these are obviously worn a bit over the years, but never ripped. Uh, waterproof. Pretty much sure they're flame proof to a point. Um, well worth the investment. Had these one done, they were custom. You can't quite see. They did have green stitching, but obviously the amount of people that have been in here, it's kind of worn off over the years. But kept the original seats uh, very, very protected. So big shout out to LI Upholstery. Really, really good. I bought this uh, little switch panel surround uh, to go in the middle. Uh, again, quite some time ago. Recently added a couple of USB slots, which is super useful for charging the phone and that kind of thing on the road. Uh, also switch, which is for my interior light. Again, really useful bit of kit, wire hanging down obviously. But yeah, that's just nice on a nice little rocker switch. Uh, and then that one's for the rear wipers. Uh, at the moment when you push it in, it's not dispensing any fluid for some reason, so that's a job to look at. I did take the headlining out uh, because it just sagged and got very frustrating. Uh, sagging down, hit you on the head all the time. So I added some uh, Dynamat pads and some foam in the middle, uh, which is a nice substitute. Um, there was sometimes a bit of a rattle in the roof and that sort of fixed that. Uh, so I might do the rest of the car uh, in the back as well at a later date. And maybe put a new headlining in. One great thing about the Land Rover is that also back at university, it was a great talking point and a lot of people would, you know, jump in the back and we'd, you know, just go out to explore locations because I did a film degree. Uh, so we were always going out looking for locations, scouting places. Uh, and this was a great truck to do it in. Um, and also it would take all the kit to location really easily. A lot, of, a lot of my friends sort of had little hatchbacks and things and we couldn't fit everything in. So usually this would be used to, uh, transport stuff around one time we were going to Bristol to do a, a shoot with a, a proper film camera uh, it was an old Arri uh, film camera uh, had a lot of dolly equipment had a lot of big cases to go with us I took a few people in my car uh, we didn't take any equipment but my friend tried to fit all of the equipment in his Volkswagen Polo sorry if you're watching this uh, Scott I think it was you at the time uh, but um, yeah, I think it got about two miles down the road and uh, it broke down because of the weight of all this stuff in the back. So uh, we quickly went back, transferred everything into this and, uh, and then I shipped it all down to, um, to Bristol for the shoot. Uh, and luckily we made it and it worked out. So the landy saved the day on that one. So yeah, little things like that and, and stories that stick in your memory. Um, so that's, that's what makes it a fun car as well, driving it. Uh, and having those experiences. In terms of actually driving these cars, I think they're absolutely brilliant. You can have so much fun in them. You also have a bit of a, a level of respect for it because it is a big heavy car and you can only push it so far. Uh, but I think if you're on, obviously on stock running gear and stock brakes, there's only so much you can do. Uh, I don't push mine too far because I know the brakes aren't that great. That's the point that I've got to upgrade, I know. Obviously with the suspension on this one, it's a little bit hard. So you, when you go driving around, especially with the condition of the roads around where we are at the moment, it's not that great. You get crashed around a lot in it. But other than that, it's really nice seating position. You know, you, you're high up, you can see a lot of the road, you can see around you, which is really nice. Uh, and it's just a nice cockpit to be in generally. Obviously there's not a lot of room to maneuver in it. It's quite tight, but yeah, it's a Land Rover. Um, it's very quirky uh, I just love it but one other thing that's really great about them is that they're a good talking point and if you're out with your mates they're in their Land Rovers you're on yours you're having a nice cruise together it's just really great you get a good feeling a good buzz off it um, and you can have a really good day out behind the wheel of one of these cars so going down passenger side a few scratches and war wounds the 
back I've got a uh, straight through exhaust and an exit just behind the wheel in the normal place. Uh, I know before Fred's had his side exit down here at the bottom, which looks pretty awesome, but um, not necessarily that safe and also quite smoky. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, straight through exhaust all the way through to the back uh, here. Uh, had this back section made by Long Life Exhausts. Uh, it was about 50 quid or something like that. Uh, and did a really good job. And I remember driving back with Fred after we had it done down the motorway, going past lorries and the noise was bouncing off it and it just sounded amazing at the time. Now it just sounds like it farts along really. <laughs> and uh, it makes a lot of noise, but it doesn't actually go that quick. But yeah, again, part of its charm. It sounds quite fruity now. I quite like the sound of it. Um, and who doesn't like a straight through on a Land Rover? So around to the back of the landing now and uh, did replace this back door uh, because it looked pretty grotty. It also had an old wheel carrier on it and it, we put a big plate on it uh, where it used to be and it just looked a bit janky. So uh, bought a sort of a, a cheap second-hand back door from Peterborough Land Rover Show one year. Bought a new door skin for that because it needed it. Uh, and my friend John Lewis very kindly uh, fitted that door skin and also sprayed it in the green. Uh, also got some stickers on the back here, Club 86 stickers, um, also taking pride of place, our Bale Killer one, normal Club 86 one, and also the most important one today is our Classics for Carers sticker, taking pride of place in the back window. Um, it'll hopefully stay there for many, many more years to come. Also in the back, also very standard, it's got a little bit of sound deadening throughout. Also made a bit of a storage drawer under here, uh, just to store some bits and bobs, uh, which is quite useful. And next to that, I've got the subwoofer. Uh, bought this subwoofer, again, from a Land Rover show, secondhand. It came out of a Subaru Impreza, uh, so I was told by the guy, and I paid 15 quid for it. And it's absolutely amazing. Well, I think it's amazing. It's not the best quality, but, you know, it gives you some nice bass. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little walk around of my Land Rover Defender today. And uh, equally, if you want to watch another one, please go over to our channel and check out Fred's uh, 90 walk around. Uh, lots of really interesting mods on his and also uh, lots of clips behind the scenes stuff. So that's a really good one to check out. Also, very importantly, please uh, continue to post and uh, follow Classics for Carers and support them. He's done a fantastic job. Uh, well done, Nick, for putting this fantastic event together uh, and all the people that probably helped you as well. I'll uh, put your Instagram down below. Um, also, please uh, carry on donating, carry on supporting, buy a rally plate, buy a couple of stickers, and those funds will keep on rolling. That's really important to help our NHS workers. Um, so, yeah, really hope you enjoyed this video today. Hope you enjoy Fred's video as well. Drop any comments down below of what you think. We're going to try and do some more videos as we carry on into the lockdown. Uh, and, yeah, and please stay safe and stay at home to protect our NHS. See you in the next one.